Good evening guys, today we're going to do um, a painting tutorial on um, a hawk flying in the sky in daylight but the sun is on the other side which it won't be captured in the painting. There would actually be um, a half moon where the hawks would be flying around. Um, this image is something that I kind of saw while I was walking today. Um, I was just went for a little walk and I noticed that a lot of flux, um, hawks keep flying around me and I just looked up their spiritual meaning and I was just really excited about them and I just want to incorporate that in my painting today. Um, if you don't know the spiritual meaning on it, it means um, just spreading your wings and um, moving on to bigger and better things and possibly becoming a leader in some way, in a group, or whatever. I just really like the whole sound of it, and um, if you want to know more, just go look it up. It's really nice. Um, I always pay attention to nature in general. I always feel like it's a sign from God, like, if I see something more than once, you know, it could be like a butterfly or whatever, you know, just something that cheer me up in a way, and then if I see it more than once and it just seems to be happening like the whole entire time I'm outside, I have to look it up. So, and it, it, it kind of like makes me happy inside and then, then I like to share that with others. So, um, for this painting, um, we're going to use a, a 16 by 20 canvas. Um, you have something smaller, that's fine too. Majority of it's going to be blue. Um, like a lighter type blue and the half moon will be probably along this area somewhere and the hawks I kind of want to make some bigger and some smaller like from far distant um, I'll probably add a little bit of some trees um, just in the background um, so when I was walking you know, I did see a lot of them flying all over the place. Some of them were like circling me. So I'm like, one, they're either trying to eat me or two, it just, this could mean something spiritually. So decided to look it up and I was really happy with what I saw and figured I would share it with you guys. But um, I want to incorporate it with my painting today. And I encourage you guys to do the same thing if you're a beginner or you're just not sure like where to go one day just go out for a walk i mean that's like the best place to find inspiration anyways so if you're new at painting and you're not really sure where to start you can always follow along with others through youtube um it helped me out tremendously in the beginning when i first started to um paint in general and um I really liked it a lot where it just turned into a whole thing for me where now I want to paint for others, I want to help others and help them get more in touch into their creative intuition. So uh, this half moon was kind of in the distance and it, the way we're going to make it we're probably going to use q-tips so you might want to grab that. and. I'm thinking this for me will take a two-day project because I want the background to be nicely dried before I add in the hawks. So I'm probably going to trace them, well not trace them out, but like sketch them out to how they looked as close as possible in my mind. I didn't even take a picture of it, which I regret. But um you know, yeah, whenever you're outside and you like embrace nature, always carry a camera on you because you might see something where you might want to try to paint it later and then boom, it's gone. It's, you missed your shot there. So you might have to just try to remember it as much as possible. So that's a, what I'm going to try to do today is just go off of memory what I saw, share that with you guys. And um, this video has probably already been made and edited to a way where you already know what we're going to do and you chose this one because you want to paint this one and thank you for tagging along and following me on this and um, I hope you enjoy this experience with me 
and um, we're just gonna grab our tools really quick and um, I just want to make sure my camera is displayed in a way where you can see Bring it forward a little bit. That's good. So I'm having my uh, camera face the other way. Usually I like to see what's going on inside the camera, but I'm trying something different today. So just let me know how the quality is and if it was better the way I had it before if you watch any of my other videos. So I'm gonna set that up right there so you can hear me. And um, I like to put a little heat on in here. I'm, this is um, a walk-in closet and uh, the heat doesn't come all the way on in here. So I just don't want to be too freezing in here. Um, where, I'm where, am I where I'm from right now, I, I live in New Jersey and it's quite chilly out right now. It's, I think it's in the 30s, and it's, we're, we're actually expecting snow later on this week. I don't know how true that is because one day it's snow, one day it's, you know, warm out. You don't even know what you're going to get sometimes here. So usually I don't have a preference on brushes. I kind of just use whatever I have in front of me, <laughs> which I know that's terrible to say. So I mean, we will probably use this um, one and a half, 38.1 millimeter brush uh, for the sky, maybe for blending. Um, same thing with this. This is just a regular makeup brush that I don't use anymore. Uh, I probably use it like once or twice. and. I don't know if you can tell, but I have bad acne, so I really try not to put anything on my face. I try to be as natural as possible. Fortunately, it's hard, but um, yeah, if you're like me and you just have these brushes laying around and you never use them, go grab it. I mean, this is a perfect uh, tool for blending, so I'll probably use that. Uh, we're going to use a fan brush, probably for the clouds as well. So, but that's the side as well. Um, this is another brush that I like to use a lot. The only problem is with this one, um, the little hairs come out sometimes and then it gets into the paint and then I don't really like how it does that, but I still use it. And when I do use it, I scrape it off with the um, palette knife. And that's what we're probably going to use because I've been doing this technique and if you've been following around along with me, you probably noticed that I do this sometimes, is I'll put down my paint first, my different shades, and when I'm done, I just start scraping it, the excess, because we don't want too much paint on it, especially if we're going to add some other details. We don't want it to look really cartoony. So we're going to scrape off that excess paint and then what I like to do is come in with a brush like this and start blending it up from the bottom and working my way up to the top. So that's probably what we're going to do with those. So you, if you have one of these, that's what we're probably going to use. If, we, if you don't have one of these, don't worry. You can just leave it at the way it is and still proceed with that blending technique. It just might look a little bit more darker. Um, probably going to need a thin tip brush as well. Um, I have, I have a, um, I have different sizes. Um, if you have a, a zero or number one thin tip brush, that's probably what you want to go for. This would be good for the outlining of the moon. I'm not so sure how we're going to fill it in. I know I want to use Q-tip for it. So it kind of like fades into the blue and it's not fully like, you know, you'll, you'll know where the half moon uh, begins and ends with the technique we're going to do. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm sorry. Um, 
So, and then also the thin tip brush would be good for when we get into the, um, the hawk details. Now I want to make one big hawk, possibly another, and the other two or three in the distance, and then have the moon, half moon. Now I'm thinking maybe, now I'm, like my creative juices are flowing, I'm thinking I might have these a little bit bigger um, on the canvas than I had originally in my mind so that um, it kind of just pops, everything just pops. Um, I apologize if I'm all over the place. This is what happens in the beginning of my uh, creativity. I just get all, all over the place. Um, so, that's where I start off with. I'm gonna go look for those paints that we're going to use. we got here. We got all different kinds of blues. Um, we're probably going to need some black paint. I don't really like this one. I like this one better. Uh, Sometimes I like to mix my blues with white just to make it more paler if I don't have the kind of color I'm looking for, which is probably what we're going to end up doing. To get those colors that we're trying to get, you know? Alright, so this is what I came up with so far for the, the sky, for the blue sky. Now I'm thinking we're gonna go for a lake blue for like the top part, but I wanna make it a paler, so we're probably gonna mix some white to it. And then we got ocean green. Now this doesn't look like an ocean green. It actually looks closer to a turquoise, so if you have a turquoise, that's fine, or a color that's close to this, that would be fine. Um, as well, I'm probably going to mix these two together and white to come up with a more paler type like blue and more brighter ocean green, if that makes any sense. So we're going to just start mixing our paint a little bit. And like I said, we're probably going to do two shots of this video, one today and one tomorrow, but it'll be all together once I have it up on YouTube. But, um, just so that the paint can dry for later, I want to sketch over it in case I make a mistake too, I don't want the paint to be wet and then chip at it, you know? And I really have this envision of it and I want to share that with you and if you, if you were doing this video with me, you already see that vision. Uh, jealous. <laughs> Cause you already know what it looks like, but I don't. <laughs> but that's the future. This is now. It's kind of weird how do these things work, right? Now for me, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing with the paint. Um, this paint, it dried up on the cup and then I lost the top part, so I kind of just let it be a cap for it, so that's why I did that. So what I did for this first step, I'm actually just mixing the two, the two blues and the whites together. And I will show you what I come up with. Really coming out nice. Also, before we get started, make sure you find clothes. You don't mind getting messy. Um, can't stress that enough. I mean, sometimes 
I think I'm good. And then I have days where I'm a little sloppy and I'm like, oh shoot, I messed up one of my favorite pants or whatever. So now I try to wear pants specifically for painting and shirts I just don't really care that much about, you know. So this is the kind of blue I got here. Now I like this blue. This blue is kind of close to the, the way the sky was when I was out there. That would be more of a paler color and more in this part of the canvas. So I'll leave a little spotlight there so I know... Let me just make it a little bit paler. That's where I want that to go. So our next part is we're going to um, do the darker color up top. I just come up with all these different shades of blue so we feel satisfied with what we got going on here. Trust me, you want to be happy with what you're putting down, so make sure you like what you're doing, the colors what you're, you want. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. If you want it slightly different, by all means, do it. If you want it to have um, to be a night type painting, by all means, do that. Um, that might be pretty cool. And just maybe instead of the hawks, like a black and white type painting, so the hawks being brown or black, you could do more like a white black background for night. Do a black and white type photo um, painting if you want. Doesn't have to be exact. I actually encourage you to try to have your own unique self into it, you know? And you enjoy it better that way. You don't try to stress or try to achieve what I'm doing, you know? And I want you to have fun here. So just put a little um, light in this blue, just to see um, how it came out. I, I really like it. It's just slightly bit lighter, not too much. And now I'm just going to come back in for. So what I'm going to do is just a little reminder, this is the color I want for up there. I don't want too much of that paint in there. Just die. Alright, so now I'm going to come back in with this ocean green. And for this part, I'm also going to put a little bit of the white paint to mix it. I, want, I kind of want to act a little bit quick here because I already put the paint on the canvas. I'm telling you guys, uh, little, um, little, H, little HD right here, ADHD, I'm sorry, little ADHD today, trouble focusing. Okay, this color would be more like in this area. Alright, so got that going and then we'll go back in for more of a paler color towards the bottom, like a white like just straight up white paint towards the bottom. Alright, so what we're going to do... Oh, I know why I'm like this. I I know this sounds crazy, but um, you know, I've been on this keto diet for almost like two, three years, but not. it's kind of lazy. I'm lazy right now. But I made myself a trail mix with um, chocolate. And chocolate, for some reason, is like ca caffeine to me right now, lately. So anytime I have it, I'm like super hyper. So I apologize for this. <laughs> Alright, so what we're going to do is we're just getting our colors onto the canvas. Um, as you can see, I have this color up here. So that's what I'm going to do, is just put this color first. Water. 
first I gotta rinse out my brush, rinse it out really good. So we're getting that pigmentation. So you just trying to use those colors we just made out. Rinse it out. Try it out. Now we're just going to work on the second part. And you can leave a little gap in because I'll we'll probably put a little blue in it so it can blend nicely. The one that we mixed up with the um, ocean green and blue. I mean, um, ocean green and white, I'm sorry. Titanium white, I'm just working on my paint. It's coming towards the bottom. We'll start scraping most of it off. So we don't really want to add too much. So now we're going to start putting that white paint in between. Then we'll start scraping and blending. I'm just moving a little quick because I don't want it to dry. scraping most of it off. So what we're going to need, we're going to need um, some paper towel just to scoop some of that off. Um, I have a plastic scraper here. Um, I have a metal scraper. I like to use a metal scraper better. You can even use a, um, a plastic knife if you have one. If you don't, it doesn't have to be a scraper. Just don't use the sharp edge. Use the, the more dull
see it is taking off that little bit of paint has made a big difference and much easier for blending. And it doesn't look too clumpy. It looks very smooth. back in with a little bit more white towards the bottom. So I know this is a daytime um, painting, but I'm going to add some stars before we start adding the moon and all the other stuff. I know it sounds crazy, sometimes you can see stars during the day, but this is going to be more of like a fantasy type painting. So we're going to make it stars during the day. We're just going to use white paint and a toothbrush. You can either just use a regular brush and you would just put a little bit of paint, have the brush be dry, and then you would just start flicking it to this kind of motion. Music. 
outside there wasn't too many clouds but there was some so we'll probably add just a little bit of clouds. I don't go too happy on that
this, I'm going to use the fan brush. I became a big fan of this. So I'm going to use a fan brush. And I like to use a little bit of white paint and then water to do this to start off with. And it's going to be mixed in a little bit with some blue because the water is a little cloudy, but that's okay. I like how that looks. So for this, water to go lighter and we'll go back in with just white paint to get more outlining. Okay, so I sketched out my birds, my hawks, and I just looked up a, um, an idea of what their wings look like and the colors they, they would be. So I just, to the best of my ability, I just drew one, put two out, because that's what we're going to do, just two of them, maybe some in the far distance, but we'll start off with these two. Now I noticed the one that I was looking at and the one that I've seen fly around my house um, they're called a buffalo something hawk, so they're, they're dark, um, their body's dark, like black I would say, or a dark brown, and their leaves are kind of, I mean their, um, wings are kind of like a tan color, and then they have like these like brown or black stripes on them, so that's what we're gonna do, to the best of our ability on that. And remember, we're doing this for fun, so don't worry if you mess up here. Um, you can always just let it dry and then go back with it with water and just try to wash some of it out if you make a mistake. So a warm gray would probably do well for um, his feathers, his wings. And for his body, I feel like we might just do black, like a black mixture of a black and a brown together. It's hard to get the colors exactly. So I have, let's see what kind of browns I have. And then you have to remember you're looking up at it at the sky, so the body's a lot more darker, but the feathers might be lighter. So this is a burnt armor, so we're going to use that for his body with a mixture of the black and the white. So we'll start with that first and we'll probably go for his body first and then the wings. You know, we'll do the wings first because you might catch into the body, so it's best that we probably work with our wings first. So we'll do that. We might just do a mixture of this and a little bit of the burnt auburn. Just a little bit and mix them together. And I'm going to use a thin tip brush for this. Yeah, that kind of looks close to the feather type as possible. Yeah, that look, does look like it. 
Maybe a little bit white to it. And let it have a couple of sh like streaks of brown in it. Gives it more of a realistic look because the feather isn't a hundred percent that one single color, you know. Just add a little bit. Just add a little bit more of that warm gray to it. That's a little bit too dark. What you could do is just put that mixture of that uh, burnt auburn and gray together first and then come back over it with that warm gray to kind of give it a highlight. And as we're going closer in, we can just really focus on Burt Harbor. So I'm noticing my feathers. I drew them out a lot bigger. That's okay. We can come back in and just fix whatever we went too heavy with later.
It would be, um, the body would probably be dark and the wings would be lighter because of the reflection, you wouldn't see too much color into the body. So that's what we're probably just going to focus on, making it dark, the body, and really just letting the, the feathers shine through the light. It's probably what the best thing to do right now, you don't want to do too much. Um, so we'll use the um, number two brush like I was before, and we are going to use black paint for this part, and maybe a little mixture of um, that burnt auburn. Maybe just make mix, making a mix out of that. And you should get a really dark burnt armor by just doing this. So you can see it's not black, but it's not too much burnt armor, but it's on the in between side, you know? And they're just go going through the body. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just do like a sway type motion so you can see that there's obviously feathers in this part as well. It's not just um, the body, you know? So like make them blend a little bit. We might have to come back in with that other brush of her just making that happen towards the um, feather area. And the body, it's very weird. I mean, it just, you don't really see too much of the claws when it's flying. You just see like, really the wings just stand out the most. Everything else just is, you know? Uh, for me, I'm just adding a little bit of uh, water to the brush.
right, so the bodies are repainted. So now we're gonna go back into for our wings. And we are going to use the black paint. And, oh, I already have some out already, so I'll use some of that. And we're going to make those thin little lines into it. But you know what? I might use an even thinner brush. Let's see, what do I have? Uh, I have... Yes, I do. I have um, a zero thin pit brush. If you have one of those, that'd be even better. It's thinner than that other one we had. And this would make those little lines. And it doesn't have to be perfect, we a couple of little dashes of the lines.
three rounds of push for this part. An extra mat round and left. Just to get the mark of the tree going and then we'll just go in with the thinner number
Thank you.